and this is how you make interesting YouTube thumbnails. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. IT at Guys recently released Son of Zigbee sensors. They are for the Son of Zigbee bridge and I've talked about the product as one as the kit in this video here. So if you want to see how it works and see the amazing range, I would strongly recommend you to watch this video. In this video, however, I'm going to focus on the compatibility. Because I already have the sensors thanks to IT at Guys, I can test them with different systems. So I got myself a Twia hub. I've got a Mi Home uh, hub as well, which supports Zigbee devices. There's obviously the infamous and uh, slightly useless IKEA Tratroy, and probably what everyone wants to know, how well they work with uh, Raspberry Pi and CC2531 USB debugger. When Son of Guys initially sent me the Zigbee bridge to take a look at, there weren't any sensors to try out. So I only was able to confirm it's working with the Sonoff Basic and the Smart Socket from Sonoff. However, I've tried a couple of Tuya compatible Zigbee sensors and they seem to be working just fine with uh, Ewlink app as well. So that got me thinking, can I actually use it with Tuya? And the answer is yes. Well, almost yes. So I launched a Tuya app and tried to park a couple of sensors and turned out that I was able to successfully link those products, so those are Son of S31 Zigbee socket and Son of Basic R3 Zigbee, which appeared as a smart socket device in a Tuya app. I also was able to pair all Zigbee sensors, however there were some problems. While temperature and humidity, motion sensor and contact sensor were working flawlessly with Tuya app, I was not able to correctly identify the son of switch. It appeared in a Tuya app as a wall switch with three different buttons. However, none of the three different actions coming from son of Zigbee switch were mappable and the device was pretty much useless. It's a shame because uh, after powering all the sensors and making it work beautifully, I was actually having quite high hopes. Another thing I've noticed was how polished the Tuya app is comparing to Evil Link. It's a bit of shame and I hope the Evil Link guy is gonna step up their game and catch up soon. On to the next contenders, IKEA Transfree and Xiaomi Mi Home. The long story short, none of them would work, not even the motion sensor which I had the highest hopes for. It also helped me to realize that IKEA software didn't improve much and it's still lacking functionality. You can learn more about IKEA in here and why I wouldn't recommend you to use their software. However, you should definitely check out their uh, Zigbee range and get a couple of sensors because they do work with CC2531. Uh, That's the designation, isn't it? I guess it's time to serve the main course. Son of Zigbee sensors with uh, Zigbee 2 MQTT. Obviously I'm using the CC2531 and I've got one which I purchased on AliExpress and one that has been delivered to me by IT at Guys. I've tested three different revisions of ZStack 1.2. I'm using 1.2 instead of 3.0 because 3.0 is still in development and still contains some bugs and I don't feel that I'm missing out. Out of three different firmware revisions, two of them were working fine and one firmware revision wasn't. First good news is the latest revision of the ZStack works great. You'll have no problems pairing in using the sensors. The second good news is, even though IT at Guys use all the firmware, their firmware shipped with CC2531 uh, works flawlessly as well. For some reason the firmware I was using for my home automation was giving me an issues. This is the 25th of March 2019 firmware visible on the screen in red that you shouldn't really use for these sensors. I was able to pair the motion sensor and a button and use them successfully, but the temperature sensor and the contact sensor constantly were giving me issues despite being paired. None of which was present on the latest uh, revision of the firmware, so guys, do update your firmware. If you want to know how, just head to this video where I can show you how to use Raspberry, a couple of cables and a soldering iron to update your uh, CC2531 without CC debugger and waiting a couple of weeks for the cable to arrive. The process takes only a couple of minutes and it's very easy to do. Okay, let me open Node-RED and I'll show you how to work with Zigbee sensors and a couple of 
small quirks that you have to be aware of. I've set up a couple of MQTT nodes already to intercept the messages from the log. I'm not using a default topic, so you'll see that I'm using Zigbee, not Zigbee 2 MQTT, just to make it shorter, so modify that to your liking. You can easily check the firmware of your coordinator as well by executing inject of an empty payload and you'll receive the information about your firmware. I'm using the latest firmware in the ZStack 1.2 so it was a breeze to add the devices. All I had to do is just to press the corresponding buttons for a couple of seconds until LED would blink and wait a few seconds for each devices to be added to my Zigbee 2 MQTT. It was simple and I had no problems at all with any of the sensors as you can see on the screen. Now that the job is done, all I have to do is just uh, get MQTT in node with the debug and I can start testing it out. Once you paired all the sensors, get all devices again using that inject node and you'll have access to the friendly name and the device ID and also the sensor type which is going to be much easier to identify your devices based on the ID itself. This is just for a test, so I'm not going to rename them, I'm just going to stick every single ID in a correct MQTT in node, so I could show you for testing purposes. First sensor to post was the motion sensor, and there is uh, some information available that I want to uh, talk through. Um, first of all, occupancy, so uh, true and false true mean the recent motion has been detected. There is information about tamper, but the sensor itself actually doesn't have anything to detect whether, whether the enclosure was opened or not. Then we have three different ways of monitoring the battery, uh, percentage, uh, low battery warning and the voltage, and also link quality, which is a Zigbee signal strength. Next up is the temperature and humidity sensor. Now you have available the temperature in Celsius, you've got uh, link quality, uh, there is a humidity in percentage and battery in percentage and voltage. There is no low voltage state. Now the temperature is in Celsius, so if you want uh, values in Kelvin or values in Fahrenheit, you have to recalculate it. And I wrote a simple script so you could get those information uh, together. There are two simple functions that calculate the formula for Kelvin and Fahrenheit and you can just stick the function node and enable the complete message object uh, in a debug to get that information presented to you. I didn't want to override the message payload so I just entered it in a message temperature instead and you have all three values in there and you can retain the values about batteries in a message payload. Next sensor is a contact and as you can see you've got false and true. There is also tamper which suffers from the same um, issue as the motion sensor. There is nothing on the PCB that would discover the tamper and the information about low voltage, battery percentage and uh, uh, battery voltage. Both sensors, the contact and motion sensor, respond within a second. And the last on the list is obviously the wireless button. And the wireless button comes with three different actions. There is a single click, there is a double click and there is a long click. It's worth mentioning that the long press is based on a timeout, so you have to hold down button for 3 seconds and then the message is released regardless whether you're still holding the button or you've just stopped pressing it. There is no press up and press down action, so you won't be able to have a custom timeout for long presses. And as you can see on the screen there is information about the voltage and the battery levels as well. After my first video about these sensors, some of you pointed out that these aren't too pretty and, well, I could agree, but come on, they don't have to end up in a museum of art of any kind and for the most part you're never gonna see them, apart from the button one, obviously you want to see button where you're pressing, but most of my sensors are tucked away and hardly ever visible. Another thing to consider is the battery size. They come with a triple the battery of the usual sensor, which means if your usual sensor lasts up three to six months, you can get three times as much with this, which is seriously huge advantage. If you're convinced and you want to buy these, just take a look at the description of this video. You're gonna find direct links to ITED store. If you use my links, ITED knows I send you and they like me even more. But if you really hate the design of it, I've got an idea for you. I've actually looked inside of the PCB and it is possible to easily uh, redesign the shell and 3D print something. I can't make any promises, but if I'm gonna find some time, I'll definitely give it a go and see if I can create a much better enclosure for the sensors. 
which is a perfect opportunity to follow me on my social media because this is where you're gonna get notification. I do not have a posting schedule, you know how YouTube works, but sometimes I just only do articles, so if you don't wanna miss on that, pick a social media of your choice and follow me there for instant notification. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll definitely gonna see you in the next video. Take care, bye! Thank you.